Morning everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Sorry today is uh, really misty and murky and uh, so the opportunity to record videos is a bit limited. There are still quite a lot of sheep out here even though this is nearing the end of grazing now. These are all ewes out here. Let's see if I can zoom up that end of the valley. Quite a lot of ewes in this field. And as you can see, the weather is far from clear. But uh, as you can see, the sheep are behind me and uh, finishing on the, off this block of mustard. And we've actually managed to get some of our flexi wheat in, so that's a good sign. Uh, so we, I think we've managed about 30 hectares so far. We have been working quite hard uh, planting beans for a neighbour. So, uh, not much to report outside this week. Of course, one of the lessons of cover crops is trying to understand what your objectives are when you choose what crop is going in. So previously this morning, that mustard crop really is not frost hardy. So if it's killed off, that helps generate a nice uh, clear target for glyphosate in the winter and it makes establishment all the more easy. Now, the crop behind me is a multi-species cover crop and you'll remember that we grazed this quite early in the season and there were some questions about whether it would green up a bit again. And as you can see, actually, it achieved quite a good ground coverage now uh, and it's recovered quite well motivation for this crop is, is significantly different from that straight mustard where my target was a cheap cover crop to establish with just as high a green area index as possible holds nutrition nutrients rather than do anything else and of course it's susceptible to frost so it sort of meets all mustard meets all of those objectives Whereas uh, this multi-species crop, for example, is quite different. This is in my environmental scheme, uh, Countryside Stewardship CSS scheme, which we've uh, been accepted for this week. And uh, so I have an obligation to have multi-species in here. But as far as, and, it, and it, we've managed to graze it, it's greened back up again. Some of that is to do with the rape volunteers, but Fundamentally, a rape is quite a cheap inclusion in a cover crop mix. It also has mustard, which is recovering nicely. Uh, it had a lot of buckwheat in it because we had buckwheat in stock. We've got, we had uh, some clover from, that we had undersown earlier. Now the vetch is quite tricky because it seems to me that the sheep really like the vetch and it doesn't recover particularly well from grazing. But here we have some vetch, and of course the inclusion of vetch is important because it's a, a, a legume like the clover, so good for fixing nitrogen. I seem to be particularly able to grow thistles, but they weren't in my mix. So when it comes to help about choosing your cover crop, I highly recommend a cover crop guide published by SARE Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education which is an outreach program sponsored by the USDA and the University of Maryland. It's very helpful and a good place to start when you are designing your cover crop mix. And this brings me to another point. This week I have been, uh, been out speaking at the NEC and exhibiting for uh, another business I'm a partner in where we do farm diversification consultancy. Post Brexit, we had a look at our farming business and tried to, we looked to New Zealand to see if there was a, a, what lessons we could learn from the New Zealand system. And I highly recommend the, this book, uh, Farming and Subsidies, Debunking the Myths by uh, Brian Chamberlain who was head of Federated Farmers, the uh, New Zealand equivalent of uh, the NFU. Now, one of his recommendations in the book, understand your core business 
and maximize um, higher margins within your core products. So what link does maximizing your core products have with, it, with going cover crops? Well, my opinion is that for regenerative farmers, this is, is part of the system. So it's important to un identify where we can achieve extra sales for, complement, for rewarding us for doing this sort of behaviour. Now there aren't payments available yet for this sort of system as far as products go. We're not being paid a premium for growing wheat under this system. That might well come in the future but that's not available at the moment. So what I've started with was with looking at environmental schemes, CSS, could I take out the overwinter cover crop followed by low input spring wheat be rewarded for this sort of system with an extra uh, payment from the government. And I've also been looking at uh, carbon trading as a result. I can understand farmers who say, well, why are you going for carbon trading? Uh, you know, is it the next great mis-selling scandal? Is it, do we really know enough about the market yet? Are we getting ourselves into trouble? All of those are valid arguments for not going into the system but the purpose of this channel is to try and help farmers navigate a regenerative agriculture and the opportunities available to farmers who are interested in the field and therefore I believe I have a bit of an obligation to try and share my experiences take some risks in order that others can learn from my experiences so We've had a look at the market. Uh, there's two particular platforms that are of interest to us. So I want to just st spend a little bit of brief time just going through a comparison between the two and explaining uh, where we are in our journey. In June, the Farmers Weekly ran an article reviewing six companies offering carbon-based payments to arable farmers. The Farmers Weekly offered some interesting suggested questions which we will return to in future. The Novi scheme is only available to US farmers. The Indigo Ag scheme is similarly inaccessible to UK farmers. The Bayer system, farmers who started continuous no-till or strip-till and are using cover crops after the 1st of January 2012 are eligible for payments. In fact, for up to five years of historic payments could be available to growers who can verify practices that occurred during that period. However, those who started using these techniques before 2012 are not eligible. We purchased our Claydon drill in 2011, so there could be a potential issue there. Soil Capital claims to be Europe's first certified multinational carbon payment scheme and is available to UK arable farmers. Soil Heroes is also available in the UK. They use a baseline of soil and biodiversity assessments taken at the start of a project and again after five years. Growers commit as a minimum to reduce tillage and grow at least five species in a cover crop. And finally, number six, gentle farming is being developed by a Lincolnshire farmer, Thomas Ghent. Credits will be verified by an independent third party verifier and the farmers uh, then have full control over whether they sell the certificates independently through gentle farming or keep them for themselves. So thank you for listening today. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the, in the comment section below. I do my very best to reply to, us, to them all. And uh, yes, subscribe for more updates of when our latest videos go live. Thank you very much. See you next time.